Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, no, the title is not misleading. We really are going to be giving you 50 different Japanese sports cars that you can buy for less than $5,000. Now, this video is most likely going to get a lot of views. So, if you're new to this channel, here's a couple things you should know. I'm from America, okay, and I live in the New England area. So if you're in California or Florida, the prices are going to be a lot different for you. So there are going to be a lot of these cars that won't be under 5K for you. I just want to make that incredibly, incredibly clear because I get so many comments all the time saying that car's not under 5K. And then it turns out the guy's from like New Zealand. And I'm like, you, you've got a whole different like system over there, dude. It's obviously not going to be the same. It, it doesn't make any sense. But yeah, yesterday I was just sitting there bored and I was like, you know what would be a big project, but would be a fun project to give them 50 JDM cars for less than 5k so i went ahead and started writing them up and it, it, it did take a while and it's going to take even longer but it, it's going to be worth it man this is going to be it is going to be the ultimate jdm list i obviously am a big jdm fan most of you guys are probably jdm fans too so there's not many other jdm cars for under 5k out there so without further ado let's get right into the list with number 50. coming in at number 50 it's going to the mitsubishi starion before I get into this car real quick, actually, I wanted to say in the top of the description is going to be a link to my gaming channel where I go over Grand Theft Auto online gaming content. So if you know you want to, if you want to, you know, subscribe to that channel, I would appreciate it. It would be really nice and fancy of you. But the Starion comes with a two liter turbocharged inline four making 170 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. Despite what some people think for some reason that the Starion's all wheel drive, it's not. It's rear wheel drive, but I don't know where they came up with that idea. It's a pretty cool car. I'm not a big fan of the looks, but it's just, it's going to be a hassle actually owning a car like this in America. Coming in at number 49 is going to the Toyota Corolla S. As you guys can see, these lists, these uh, in intros are going to be very short for each one of these cars. We have 50 to go through. I don't want to waste all of your time. So they're only going to be around 30 seconds and only each car is only going to get one clip in the background. I want to make that very clear. This car comes with a 1.8 liter inline four making 126 horsepower and it is front wheel drive. Pretty average. It's a Corolla, but it has the S after it, so it's a little bit more sporty. You know, it's got a little bit of a wee side to it. And some people really make these things look really good, too, to be honest. Coming in at the number 48 spot is going to the Honda Accord 7th Generation. This is by far one of the best deals for Accords right now. They come with a 3 liter V6, making 244 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. Very once again kind of in the terms of like average i would say but 244 horsepower for less than 5k in a honda motor is is pretty good it's also a v6 which is really cool and you can get a manual it's just a really cool car coming in at the number 47 spot is going to the subaru impreza gc8 not the wrx not the sti just the impreza the base model impreza gc8 which comes with a 2.2 liter flat four making 137 horsepower and it is all wheel drive because it's a subaru so of course it's all wheel drive all subarus are all wheel drive really uh, another uh, disclaimer thing real quick that i just thought of did anybody play hearthstone i know it's so random and it's a very unpopular game but if you do play hearthstone let me know how much you hate death knight in the comments because i freaking hate death knight i know not a lot of people are going to understand what i'm saying here but i just wanted to get that out and i didn't have enough time to do it in the intro so here it is i hate death knight Coming in at number 46, however, is going to the Honda Odyssey second generation. That's right, pal, friend, buddy. This is a minivan. And it's still cool, all right? It comes with a 3.5 liter V6, making 210 horses to the powers. And it's all-wheel drive. Now, obviously, this is not technically a sports car in any sense. But it is a JDM car, and I think these things can look absolutely amazing when like slammed on the ground people do turn these into drag cars sometimes which is hilarious and it's a minivan with all the space you could possibly need perfect like high school car it's reliable tons of space and can be cool in a funny way coming in at the number 45 spot is going to the mazda rx7 fb the fb stands for facebook marketplace and i really it really hurt to put this car so low i'm a big rx7 fan but the fb is just so unreliable and it's such a death trap waiting to happen it comes with a 1.1 liter two rotor making 100 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive so yes it's also very slow obviously this is a type of car where you need to really want the fb rx7 in order to actually justify the purchase of the car coming in at the number 44 spot is going to the acura integra second generation a lot of people always think that the integra that we all know and love with the spider eyes is the only integra it's not the case man they made some other cool ones and they're still under 5k this one comes with a 1.8 liter inline four making 130 horsepower and it is front wheel drive if it's anything like the other integra which i own one of <laughs> 
it's going to be a blast to drive. They're fun little cars. I actually really like the front end of the second gen Integra too. It looks so aggressive. Coming in at the number 43 spot is going to the Mitsubishi Eclipse GT fourth generation. Yes, that's right. This is a good sports car to buy for under 5k. I know a lot of people are going to be mind blown at that because they're not super popular, but they are a good car. They come with a 3.8 liter V6 making 265 horsepower in its front wheel drive. That's a pretty good horsepower number for under 5k man, especially from Japan. And now in terms of handling, they don't handle that great. They're a little bit boaty because they're heavy cars, but still you can get a manual V6 making 265 horsepower for less than 5k. Coming in at the number 42 spot is going to the Nissan Sentra B15. The Nissan Sentra B15 is a honestly very underrated car in my opinion. I remember back in Need for Speed Underground, I always picked this car first, so I have a little bit of a soft spot for it. But it comes with a 1.8 liter inline 4, making 126 horsepower. Wow, rocket ship. And it's front wheel drive. Now, yeah, they're usually used as like drug dealer cars, but they could be pretty cool, man, if you, if you really are a car guy and put some effort into making it cool. Speaking of good dealers cars number 41 is the mitsubishi galant eighth generation i really wanted to put this higher but sadly it's not the galant vr6 it's just a normal one so i really couldn't it comes with a three liter v6 making 195 horsepower and it is front wheel drive still very decent still very cool looking as well handles very very well sadly it is front wheel drive which kind of stinks because the vr4 is all wheel drive and that's really cool but who cares man it's a cool car they come with manuals buy one and they're underrated as hell barely cracking its way into the top 40 is the wonderful honda crv first and second generation i put both of them here because they're honestly pretty damn similar and you could go for whichever one you want they come with a two liter inline four making 146 horsepower and they are all wheel drive i personally like the first gen better i think it just looks a lot cooler and i like older cars better anyway but the second gen does have a lot more modern technology in it so pick your poison this is one of the only like off-road style vehicles almost every car on this list is obviously a sports car but i think i have two or three like off-roady style cars coming in at the number 39 spot however is going to another honda with the honda civic seventh generation this is by far probably the least favorite civic from everybody um and for good reason it's pretty average it comes with a 1.8 liter inline four making 140 horsepower and it is front wheel drive no you cannot find an si for under 5k sadly so you can't get the better performance version but either way it's honestly it's just a civic okay you get it's not going to be the fastest it can be if you want it to be but it's not going to be it's not going to be the coolest looking it's just a great daily driver that's going to be reliable on the other end of the spectrum coming in at number 38 is the mazda rx8 this is not reliable at all and that's why it's so low it really sucked My, the rx8 could have been so much cooler than it really was um, it just makes me sad uh, it comes with a 1.3 liter two rotor rotary engine making 212 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive it has really cool back doors which is pretty cool i guess and also has like doritos in the headrests not actual Doritos, but triangles in the headrest, which is really cool. It does look cool. It's, it's a cool car, but I just, the reliability just eats it up. So that's why it's at 38. Coming in at the number 37 spot is going to the Honda Civic EF, which is technically the fourth generation of the Honda Civic family. There's going to be a lot of Hondas on this list, so just get prepared for that. But I love the EF Civic. It comes with a 1.4 liter inline four, making 89 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive, which is one of the slowest cars on this list. There is one that's slower than it, though. Um, but obviously, it's a Honda. You swap the motor out with something more crazy, and it handles like a god, and it looks so retro and cool, dude. The EF Civics are beautiful, beautiful cars. Coming in. And number 36 is going to the Mazda Protege 5. I don't know why they added the 5 at the end, but that's Mazda for you. They do random things, man. It comes with a 2 liter inline 4, making 130 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. So, pretty, once again, pretty average. Not going to break the, you know, land speed record, but the Mazda, it's very, very lightweight, this car. It's a very small, little compact little car. And once again, an incredibly slept on car. So, the prices aren't going to go up anytime soon. It's, it's it's a good it's a good good deal coming in at the number 35 spot however is going to the toyota tacoma first generation this is the second of i believe there's only three of them so the second of three of the off-road vehicles on this list and it comes with a four liter v6 making 190 horsepower and it is four by four obviously the horsepower number doesn't really matter it's a truck it doesn't need to go fast in a straight line but i love these first end tacomas i also really like the old forerunners so if you could find one of those that's a good another good deal but they're just so cool man they're just like if i were to buy a truck i'm buying like a tacoma coming in at the number 34 spot is going to the honda accord cb7 the cb and that stands for 
Ooh, I could have made that something really inappropriate, but I'm not going to. Uh, CB stands for Cool B Boobies. Uh, it comes with a 2.2 liter inline four, making 145 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. It's a very retro looking little Honda. I love the Accords. I think the Accords are incredibly underrated, and the CB7 is really where they started to shine, in my opinion, and you can still find them for under 5K. Number 33 is going to the Toyota Celica GT 7th generation. This is one of those like forgotten about cars in the car community today. A lot of people used to hate them, and now I think people are starting to come around to them and starting to understand what made them kind of cool. And uh, it's nice to see. Comes with a 1.8 liter inline four, making 170 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. I will say these cars look insane. They look incredibly sporty. Their performance doesn't really back it up that much, but it still isn't a slow car by any means. It also has sunroof, and whenever they put the sunroof, I know that's a stupid thing to say, but it does have a sunroof, and whenever they put the sunroof down on the Celica GTs, they look so aggressive for some reason. Coming in at the number 32 spot is going to the Honda Del Sol. East Coast Ken is going to be pooping in his pants when he sees this entry because he loves this car so much, and I, I do too. It's a good car. Comes with a 1.6 liter inline four, making 106 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive, which is obviously very low in the horsepower numbers, but the car is incredibly lightweight, weighs as much as a Miata, and it's got a Honda motor in it. So you just like slap like a, one single fuel injector on, you don't have to do the whole rail, just one injector, and now it has a thousand horsepower. Coming in at the number 31 spot is going to the Honda Prelude third generation. Like I said before, there's gonna be a lot of Hondas, so get ready. The third gen Prelude is honestly so underrated it does it isn't that great in terms of performance it comes with a two liter inline four making 140 horsepower and it is front wheel drive which once is not something you know groundbreaking for performance wise especially not in the prelude family but it had like four wheel steering pop-up headlights active aero thing was sick dude barely breaking its way into the top 30 is the last of the off-road vehicles for this list with the subaru brat i bet you guys forgot about this bad boy well i didn't I didn't. It comes with a 1.8 liter flat four, making 73 horsepower, and it is all wheel drive. This is the only car that is slower than the EF Civic. It is the slowest on this list, but it's not meant to go fast. It's meant to go off road, and it does that well. It's also all wheel drive. It looks sick. It has a truck bed. It's incredibly small, and it's somehow under 5K. Buy a Subaru Brat, dude. Don't sleep on these. So technically, there's no more off road oriented vehicles for this list. Number 29, however, is. A luxury vehicle with the Lexus LS 400. These are getting a lot of love lately, and they absolutely deserve the love for sure, but they get a lot of it. Uh, they come with a four liter V8 making 270 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. Now, before you're like, oh goodness gracious, a V8 from Toyota. Oh no, don't worry, pal. It's incredibly reliable. It's called the 1UZ. The thing can last for a million miles, literally. There's a guy that drove his LS 400 for a million miles, and they look incredible. Not fast, though, and they're very heavy, and they don't come with manual transmissions, so there are some downsides. That's why it's at number 29, but good car. Coming in at the number 28 spot, however, is going to the Mazda Miata NA. If you're new to this channel, hi, my name is Mark. I like the Miata, but I don't love it as much as everybody else does, so that's why it's not in my top 10. It comes with a 1.8 liter inline four, making 125 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. I've been in Miatas before. It is incredibly tiny. I'm six foot tall, dude. It is so small. You sit in there, you feel like Donkey Kong, but they do handle like an absolute dream. Incredibly slow in a, face, in a, in a straight line but a blast to drive around the corners. Also a pretty fun little drift car. Number 27 is going to the Toyota Celica GT 6th generation. So the generation before the one that we already talked about, which I do like a lot better than the 7th generation. It comes with a 2.2 liter inline four, making 135 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. Now it's actually slower in terms of performance than the 7th gen. It's not as fast, but I just love the 6th gen so much better. It's good at rally racing too. It has rally heritage to it. It looks incredible. It has so much cool customization for it. Oh, I love the 6th gen Celicas. I love every gen Celica, to be honest. I don't even know why I keep saying the generations. I like them all. Coming in at number 26, this one sneaked its way by my uh, mindset a little bit. It's the Subaru Forester SF slash SG, which are the first two generations. Either one is pretty good in my opinion, but this one kind of snuck by when I said before that the Brat was the last off-road oriented vehicle. I guess I lied. I forgot this was on the list. Uh, it comes with a 2.5 liter flat four, making 165 horsepower, and it is all-wheel drive. The cool thing about the Forester though is you don't have to make it off-road oriented. You can slam it. You can turn it into a drift car. You can turn it into just a normal daily driver or you can lift it and turn it into an off-road monster. I love the Forester. Welcome to Mark Roden's channel. Get ready to hear about the Forester a lot. Coming in at the number 25 spot, exactly halfway through the list is the Honda Prelude fourth generation. This is my 
personal favorite generation of the prelude however it is not the one that i think is the best for under 5k i just like the looks of it the best uh it comes with a 2.3 liter inline four making 160 horsepower and it is front wheel drive it does come with a lot of other engine options though so you know be careful when buying one to make sure that you're getting the actual one that you want but i freaking love anything honda and preludes are one of the coolest like lines of honda cars in my opinion and the fourth gen prelude just looked so cool dude the front end was so aggressive Coming in at the number 24 spot is going to the Toyota Supra Mark III. You thought I was going to say the Mark IV for under 5K. You're smoking. You're smoking something and it's not illegal. Uh, the Mark III Supra you can find under 5K though. And it comes with a 3 liter inline 6 making 200 horsepower. And it is rear wheel drive. For the longest time I thought that was a 2JZ. But then I was informed by you guys in the comments that it's actually a 7M GE. Which is still a pretty good motor. Not as good as a 2J but still pretty good. Uh, and it just looks incredible. It's very long, very boaty car for sure. Like every other Supra ever has been. But it it, it can be a blast. Number 23 is going to the wonderful Mazda Miata NB. I love the NB. I think the NB is incredibly slept on. It is cheaper than an NA right now, and it's just better in every way than the NA. It's mind-blowing. It comes with a 1.8 liter inline four, making 135 horsepower, and it is rear-wheel drive. It is not only faster than the NA Miata, it has more tech, it is more comfortable. In my opinion, they look about the same. I do like the looks of the NA a little bit better, I would say. But the NB is just better in terms of performance in every way, and it's cheaper than the NA because of how slept on it is. Coming in at the number 22 spot is going to the Honda Accord 8th generation. You sadly cannot buy the 8th gen coupe for under 5k. That would be freaking sick. I would. I like the 8th gen coupes. I like any Accord coupe to be honest, but the 8th gen sedans you can find under 5k. It comes with a 2.4 liter inline four making 190 horsepower and it is front wheel drive very average but it's it's an accord and it's not the performance like v6 accord either it's just the base model accord for under 5k so don't expect to be racing and beating anybody it's a, it's a, it's a daily driver okay the, this this entry is for the daily driver boys if you need a daily driver get this one Coming in at the number 21 spot, however, is used to be a daily driver, but nowadays it would be pretty silly to daily drive it. It's the Honda Civic EG. This is technically the fifth generation of the Civic family, so it's one after the EF, and it only really improved on performance just a little bit. It comes with a 1.5 liter inline four, making 102 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. So yes, very low horsepower, but keep in mind, it's very lightweight. Okay, okay, it's very lightweight. All right, buddy. And on top of that, it's a Honda. I've said this already like five times in this video, but you can make Hondas fast. Barely breaking its way into the top 20 is the Toyota MR2 SW20. I did not plan the SW20 to be at number 20. That just happened. Uh, it comes with a 2.2 liter inline four, making 160 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. It's also, I, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, you guys roast me for saying it every time, but it's mid-engined, so it has something called snap over steer, which can be very stressful for a new driver, so I would not recommend it for a new driver. However, if you are experienced, this is a blast to drive, and it's going to be a fun time, fun learning curve, incredible race car. Coming in at the number 19 spot is going to the Mazda Speed 3 first generation because you cannot find a second gen under 5k. The probably will never be under 5k to be honest. So, but the first gen you can. It comes with a 2.3 liter turbocharged inline four making 263 horsepower and it is front wheel drive. Very good horsepower number. Very good motor to build even more horsepower on if you want to. And it's a hatchback so it has all the space and it looks pretty cool. And there's tons of aftermarket support for it. There is no downside to the Mazda Speed 3. None. Coming in at the number 18 spot is going to the Lexus GS300. Despite what I said about the Mazda Speed 3, there is some downsides to a GS300. The main one being, it doesn't come with a manual, man, which really made me upset to hear about, you know, what you're doing over there, Lexus. It comes with a 3 liter inline 6, making 225 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. This one is powered by a 2JZ, which is pretty cool, but not the 2J that came in the Mark IV Supras turbos so don't expect like 1000 horsepower but still a very good motor and it it's it's a boat for sure but it's a luxury boat so it's kind of like an ls 400 but with a 2jz coming in at the number 17 spot is going to the acura integra ls this is my car i got one of these i bought one for three thousand dollars in november with 140,000 miles on it and it was minty clean everything was perfect on it i love that freaking car comes with a 1.8 liter inline four making 140 horsepower and it is front wheel drive just like every other honda in on this list no it's not fast in a straight line but if you like the whole cornering aspect well i got news for you buddy it also is incredibly fun to modify this thing trust me everything's cheap and there's a lot of options 
Coming in at the number 16 spot is going to one that's gonna, I know people are gonna comment about, but it is the truth where I live, the Nissan 240SX S13. Yes, you can still find an S13 for under 5K where I live, and it's actually not that hard to do. It comes with a 2.4 liter inline four, making 144 horsepower, lots of force, and it's rear wheel drive. Now, the ones that you're gonna find under 5K, I'm not gonna say are great deals or anything like that. They're not gonna be like perfect cars, but you can buy one under 5K, and it's an S13, so it's like, they're all gonna be projects anyway. Coming in at the number 15 spot, however, is going to the Lexus IS250, which is technically the first generation of the IS250, but it's the second generation of the IS, so it's really weird, but you get it. It comes with a 2.5 liter V6, making 204 horsepower. This is the first car on this list that was both rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, depending on which one you got. You can make that decision yourself. I would obviously recommend rear wheel drive with a manual transmission, but that's up to you, friendo. And the IS250 is definitely a little bit heavier than the normal IS300. It's not as good as the IS300, but it's more modern, so if you like it better, buy it. Coming in at number 14 is a car that I commonly will say to people, and I still will say this to people, if they're just looking for a daily driver that's still somewhat fun, this is the best one. The Acura TL third generation. The fact that these are under 5K is honestly mind-blowing to me. They come with a 3.2 liter V6, making 258 horsepower, and they are front-wheel drive. They're also a Honda, so they're obviously incredibly reliable, and they're also kind of luxurious, which is, uh, there's literally no downside to this car, none. Coming in at the number 13 spot is going to the wonderful Mazda RX-7 FC. Yes, I think the FC is miles better than the FB, even though I personally like the looks of the FB better. Uh, the FC just improved on almost everything. It comes with a 1.2 liter two rotor rotary engine making 160 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive. That's not only a lot more horsepower, but a bigger engine. The engine is more reliable. The car handles better. It looks more modern it has more modern features in it it's just better than the fb arc 7 still is pretty unreliable though so that's why i couldn't put it in the top 10 but everything else is great about it coming in at the number 12 spot is the wonderful honda civic ek which stands for elephant kite they fly those i people are like oh they don't fly kites elephants don't do that liars comes with a 1.6 liter inline four making 160 horsepower and it is front wheel drive definitely in my opinion the best one of the best civics for under 5k for sure 160 horsepower it's just i mean in a, in a honda that's that that's a good start man and the ek civics look incredible especially the coupes i know a lot of people like the hatches better i like the coupes better i think they look just absolutely fag fantastic i love them Coming in at the number 11 spot, barely missing out of the top 10, is the wonderful Mitsubishi Eclipse GT second generation. I really did want to put this in the top 10 because it's a very underrated car, but in terms of its performance, it's just not on par with some of the other cars up there. It comes with a 2 liter inline 4, making 140 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. Before somebody comments, no, it was all wheel drive and it made 210 horsepower. That's the GSX. You can't find a GSX for under 5K, sadly, so you got to get the normal GT. Still a very cool car, still very fun. I still love this car absolutely mind-bogglingly a lot, but it's just not as good as a GSX. However, guys, now we're getting into the top 10. Up until this point, they have been in kind of in order. I've been trying to put them in order, but it's obviously very hard to put 50 cars in order from the actual worst to best. However, the top 10 are, in my opinion, the 10 best JDM cars for under 5K, at least in their respectful classes. So coming in at the number 10 spot is the Nissan 300ZX Z32. I love the Z32. A lot of people do love the Z32. A lot of people say the Z32 is their favorite Z car ever, and I can understand why. It comes with a 3 liter V6, making 222 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive. For its time, that's incredible. That's still really good even on this list. However, there is a massive downside. This is not a good first car. Rear wheel drive, pretty decent horsepower number, and it's incredibly hard to work on. It's just not a good combination, sadly, so I couldn't put it any higher, but it is such a beautiful car. Coming in at the number nine spot, however, is the wonderful Honda Prelude fifth generation. Like I said before, even though I personally like the fourth gen the best, I think it looks the best, the fifth gen is just better in every way. It comes with a 2.2 liter inline four, making 200 horsepower, which is very good for a Honda. And it is front wheel drive. Once again, a lot of people yell at me for this car because I always like say the wrong engine option and they're like, that's the bad one. You should have said the good one. I'm sorry. Okay, I am sorry. But that's the one that Google gave me, man. And the prelude is cool anyway. It doesn't need justification. Coming in at number eight is the Lexus SC. 400 however you can get a 300 for under 5k too but i put the 400 here because i actually think it's better than the 300 especially since both of them are only going to be automatics anyway it's not like you can buy a manual sc 300 under 5k so that whole like 
stuff is out of the picture anyway. And so if you're just talking engines, I think the 1UZ is honestly better than the 2JZ without the turbos. The car that the motor comes with is the 1UZ, the same thing in the LS400, a 4 liter V8 making 270 horsepower, and the car is once again rear wheel drive. Coming in at the number 7 spot is going to the Honda Civic 8th generation. Yes, I do believe that the 8th gen Civic is not only the best Civic for under 5k, but in my opinion is the best Civic for a like new time like a first buyer to buy it comes with a two liter inline four making 197 horsepower and it is front wheel drive that motor is actually a k-series motor which is one of the best Honda motors ever which is also a massive plus and i actually really like the looks of the eighth gen a lot of people don't but it's just everything is great about it the most like modern features in it still drives really quickly still handles really nice and it's still incredibly cheap Coming in at the number six spot is going to the Infiniti G37 sedan. I actually wanted to put the G35 coupe in this area, but then I realized you can find a G37 sedan for under 5k, and it's just better in every way. It comes with a 3.7 liter V6, making 330 horsepower, and it is rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. This is the second car, and I think only two cars total on this list that offer that option, which is really cool. Now, obviously I do like the coupes looks a lot better than the sedans, but if you're just talking performance, you, dude, you get a 370Z motor in a sedan for under 5K. Mm, got me in. All right, so for the top five, I did not plan this, but there is one of every big name besides Mazda within the top five. There's a Mitsubishi, a Toyota, a Subaru, a Honda, and a Nissan all in the top five, which is pretty crazy. Number five, however, is the Mitsubishi 3000 GT, which comes with a three liter V6 making 170 horsepower, and it is front wheel drive. Now, in terms of performance, it really isn't anything super special, but this car, dude, is beautiful if you look at a 3000 gt and you tell me yourself that you don't like the looks of this car you are lying it looks like a supercar it literally does and it's you could buy it for less than 5k that's crazy now you can't get a vr4 for under 5k which does suck but the base model is still honestly a very good car and at the number four spot however is going to the lexus is 300 this is the toyota by the way the same same thing lexus toyota same thing the is 300 comes with a three liter inline six making 225 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive i do believe that the is 300 is the best lexus out there for under 5k i like the sc better but the is 300 is just so much better than it it is a little bit boring looking in my opinion but it comes with a 2JZ. They're usually very, very cheap, incredibly reliable, and they're incredibly lightweight with a small wheelbase. It's just, it's, it's a match made in heaven. But now, the third place, breaking its way into a podium finish, is the Subaru WRX Bug Eye. I'm sure you guys are like, where are all the WRXs, man? Well, there's not a lot for under 5K anymore, which is really sad, but the one that is, is the Bug Eye, and it's still a really cool car. Comes with a two liter turbocharged flat four, making 225 horsepower, and it is all wheel drive. That is very good horsepower number. However, you can get more out of it. These Subarus are really well known for that kind of stuff. They like making power and the car's all wheel drive. It also, I used to be a big fan of the WRXs until I started seeing them everywhere in my town. So I kind of don't like the looks of them that much anymore. But to like a, a person that doesn't see them all the time, I'm sure this thing looks absolutely beautiful. Coming in at second place is the car that I wish I got instead of my Integra, the Acura RSX Type S. Holy moly, these things are just a bargain uh, they always have been and honestly they probably always will be they come with a two liter inline four making 201 horsepower and it is front wheel drive acura really wanted to push that push that one extra horsepower out so i could say they're over 200 and once again just like the eighth gen civic this comes with a k series so you can very easily make this way faster than it already is it also looks oh so smack dabbly smack my sphincter beautiful and it handles incredibly well and it's reliable because it's a honda nothing's wrong with it honorable mention what that's right buddy yeah, it's 51 cars because i this isn't technically a jdm car but i really wanted to add it in here it's the hyundai genesis coupe bk1 which comes with a two liter turbocharged inline four that makes 210 horsepower and it is rear wheel drive yes i know that hyundai is not a japanese brand that's why i put it as an honorable mention because it's asian it's from korea but I really wanted to add it in here because the fact that you can buy a BK1 Gen Coupe for under 5K, yes, it's going to be the 2.0 turbo that only makes 210 horsepower and it's going to have a lot of high miles and it's going to be not the best option out there. But the fact that you even can do that is, is just mind blowing to me. So it's here at a, as an honorable mention. However, the best JDM car for under $5,000, in my opinion, is, of course, the Nissan 350Z. I've owned one for a while now. There is honestly, I don't believe that there's a car better than it 
from Japan for under $5,000, at least out of the box. If you want to start talking about modifying and stuff like that, tuning, yeah, there's definitely cars better than it. The RSX, for example, is one of them. But out of the box, the 350Z is the best, in my opinion. It comes with a 3.5 liter V6, making 287 horsepower, and it is rear-wheel drive. It also looks absolutely incredible, and I would say most people would agree with that. I mean, obviously, some people are going to say no, but that's just personal opinion. Um, it also has a manual transmission 287 horsepower is very good i think it's actually the best besides the g37 sedan on this list it has its rear wheel drive it has a limited slip differential so it's good for drifters it's got a six speed manual which some of these cars a lot of these cars have manuals but they're usually five speeds there's just nothing wrong with the 350c tons of aftermarket support reliable as hell I love the 350Z. I think it really is an absolutely amazing car for under 5K. And I know some people are going to disagree with that. And that's okay. I understand that. But you have to at least admit that the 350Z is a very good deal for under 5K. Wow. My mouth is dry. I feel like the, it feels like the Sahara Desert, dude. I don't know how long I've been talking for, but it's been a while. And when I talk to you, I don't think you guys understand. When a YouTuber talks into a camera, they have to kind of yell or else they seem like depressed, right? They seem like they're just talking like this. So they have to they have to use some emphasis there, boys. They have to they have to really get it out there. And so it takes a lot. It takes a lot, man. Now, I'm not saying my job is any harder than what my friend. My friends are like manual labor guys. Oh, my God. I couldn't do that. But Jesus Christ, I'm out of breath. I am. My, my mouth is crazy. Crazy. I hope you guys enjoy it though, either way. I'm sure you guys will. Uh, you guys love JDM cars just as much as I do. So that's kind of the whole point of this video. I was like, well, I like JDM. They like JDM. So not only will it be fun for me to make it, but it'll be fun for them to watch it. Smack Nebaru, I'm gonna do it. Also guys, like I said before, in the top of the comments is going to be a link to my gaming channel. If you guys want to support that, it would be much appreciated. You know, much appreciated. I really, I really do want to get that channel to something doing good because I would love to have two channels. That'd be great. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. You guys are the freaking best. We're almost at 70,000 subscribers. Mind blowing. Once we get there, we're going to do a top 70 list, obviously. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Das and have a nice night.